Howdy, y'all. Hope y'all having a great day. <laughs> Welcome to the Cats and Bolts podcast. Three, <laughs> two, <laughs> Oh, wow. That's pretty good. You're like it. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Cats and Bolts podcast. That's producer Ben Castro. I am the host, Rod Peterson. She is the hostess. With the mostest, Serena Taylor. How you doing, Serena <laughs> he's, he's Don? Like, do I say co-host or do I save my ass here <laughs> yeah. and say hostess? Uh, we're ready to talk <laughs> NHL hockey. We are Florida's favorite hockey show. You already know that. That's why you're here. It's uh, season two, episode eight of the Cats and Bolts podcast, brought to you in part by Beach House Pompano and Baresco, emanating from Podcast Junkie Studio in beautiful downtown Boca Raton, Florida. The reason I'm wearing a Blue Jays top today is because 31 years ago today, the Blue Jays won the World Series on Joe Carter's um, ninth inning, uh, bottom of the ninth home run. Touch them all, Joe. Yeah. How are um, you doing today, Serena? How's your week? It's not bad. It's better now that we're talking about Joe Carter. <laughs> yeah, she loves Joe. We all love Joe. Um, listen, I got a few viewer comments here today. It's a bit of a yard sale of, uh, of a program today, so bear with us. We know that you're going to have... Fun. I'm going to rip that. I thought my bell was broken for a second. Is that we the do... name yard sale episode? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I like it. The yeah. yard sale episode. <laughs> Bonus points if you know what that means in hockey slang. Uh, get back to us on that. But uh, Serena, I got about 10 points. I didn't ask you what your points are you'd like to talk about. I sure, I'm sure you have a few. Usually we get to them while we're chit-chatting. Yeah, okay. So we'll see. I do want to talk about the couple of Panthers games we've been to this oh, week. Oh, well, that's in here. See, that's what I'm talking about. So that's I know. easy. I know these things. <laughs> but what we're here for. Number one, when we do have guests, it's funny, uh, they're brought to you by Beach House Pompano and Baresco, which is right across the street, and we have gift cards from those wonderful restaurants that we give to our guests. Now, last night, as we record on Wednesday, at Tuesday night's game, Panthers and Wild, I was sitting with Jeff Rimmer, our mm -hmm. last guest, and he was like, well, Rod, who do you have on your next on your show this week? And I said, we actually only have guests once, about once a month, right? To make it special when they come in. We don't have guests every week. But you know what? People said, some felt Jeff Rimmer last week, brought to you by Beach House Pompano and Bresco, might have been our best episode ever. It was fun, wasn't it? It was hilarious. And as soon as I saw Rimmer at the game, I couldn't help but laugh thinking about the stories. I think I woke up in the middle of the night laughing about the Doug McLean Mario Lemieux story. I still cannot think about that without laughing my ass off because it was so funny. And last night, I was talking to Randy Moeller. He goes, you know, I watch you guys. I watch you guys. He said that? He did. He goes, I catch some of this. And we just had Rimmer on. He goes, first thing out of his mouth, him and Doug McLean, they go at it like this. <laughs> <laughs> I go, you should see. That's hilarious. This. I go, Moeller, he's been, he was ill. He contracted a virus, so he was very sick. But I was like, when you're feeling up to it, you'll definitely have to watch watch it. It was it was fantastic. He could have binge watched while he was recovering. He could have binge watched I, I Cats and Bolts podcast. I don't think he was up to really anything. Okay. I know he called the game sick, and that was about the end of it. Then he was in the hospital. So See, Serena and I are both God people, and I say, people plan and God laughs. I had a plan for this show, but it's right off the road. What other stories do you have, Serena, for the show that you've been saving? I didn't know that you talked to Randy Moeller about that. And the U-Haul story from Saturday night we should talk about with Kelly McCrimmon. <laughs> Listen, well, I feel like you have to tell your side of the U-Haul story first. And then I'll tell the viewers the Kelly McCrimmon part of it. So as Rod's getting kind of everything ready... Rod was back in Saskatchewan this past weekend doing a sports banquet. So if you guys aren't familiar, small town Saskatchewan, they do a lot of fundraisers while they do sports banquets and they get all these hockey people and football players and whatever to come be the guest speakers. And then they slum and get Rod and whatever. No. <laughs> <laughs> so Rod That's goes funny. and MCs all of these tournaments and whatever it happens to be or these fundraisers. So Rod was up in Saskatchewan having a hard time with his rental car, which he was supposed to get through Hertz. And lo and behold, it didn't happen. So you can take it away, Mr. Hertz Peterson. Is, we're going to throw Hertz under the bus here? We, we, we should. Well, why, why wouldn't the we? The morning of me getting my rental car, I get a call from Hertz saying, uh, sorry, we don't have a rental car for you. We have no cars. And I said, uh, well, that's funny because I have a reservation right here. They said, what? We don't care. We don't have any cars. So I took a friend of mine's car out of the city, got just outside of the city. Boom. Tire blew. I wasn't interested in changing it. Uh, drove on the rim into a gas station and ran into this nice lady. Ben has the photo. I said, do you have a tow truck? She says, I have have no tow truck. I have U-Haul. And she points out to the backyard. 
can you get a pen? He's like shaking his head. I'll have it up in one minute. Uh, got, oh, here it is. Here it is. Yeah, right, she right, said, right. here she is. She says, I have U-Haul. I know. Hey, this is an unscheduled story here, so I apologize, Ben, okay. that, that we're doing it. But basically, Rod made his way to where he needed to be. You made your way. You got where you needed to be on four wheels. And the first thing out of Rod's mouth was, I'm just glad I have experience driving a grain truck. Yeah, there it is. That is Lily. And that was the 28-foot <laughs> U-Haul truck that I... That was the last remaining rental car wow. in Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. But I made it just in time. That's crazy. And I emceed a banquet, a fundraiser. We made six figures. Now, that very same night, the Vegas Golden Knights were here in town taking on the Florida Panthers. And Serena represented the Cats and Bolts podcast at the game. And she was in the press box. And you ran into the general manager of the Golden Knights, Kelly McCrimmon. Well, the funny thing is, is... Kelly came upstairs and said hi, went into the little room where he sits to watch the game, and he came back out, and I could tell he was making a beeline for me. So he walks up, I give him a big hug, and the first thing out of his mouth, it looks like Rod was, or he goes, is Rod back in Canada? I said, yeah, he's in Saskatchewan. He's got this banquet at Wolseley. And he's like, it looks like he was moving something. And I wanted to, I didn't know if I should burst out laughing because the last thing I wanted to do was make him feel stupid because he was serious. <laughs> he didn't know the whole story behind it. He's like, well, I just saw it on Twitter. And I said, well, here's the story. Told him the story. And he, of course, being from Saskatchewan himself, understood completely the situation that would happen in Moose Jaw. He was like, yep, okay, got it. Oh, yeah. The only rental car was a U-Haul truck. <laughs> Makes sense. So this is the general manager of the Vegas Golden Knights, whom I've known since I was 16 years old when I was in camp with his uh, Brandon Wheat King. So here we are, catching up to today. Happy to be back live in studio at Podcast Junkies. So uh, away we go. It's been an eventful week. Oh, They were asking about this show in Canada, by the way. They said, are you going to miss some pod?" Podcasts and uh, Cats and Bolts, I said, no, 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 we, it works. We tape on Wednesdays, and, and here we are. So speaking of that, I'm going to turn this over to some of the viewer questions. Stacy wrote in and said, any plans to go to Finland to watch the Panthers? Global Series coming up. We're going to talk about that November 1st and 2nd, Panthers versus Dallas Stars in Finland. Did you consider for a second going over there to watch? I did not. Not for one second. However, I wouldn't be opposed to it. It's not the stupidest idea. I just never really thought about it. But I think that would be so much fun. The one thing I've always wanted to do is go over and watch the World Juniors in a European country. I think that would just be a, a blast. But, yeah, I would not be opposed to going to Finland Pre to watch yeah. that. Appreciate the question, Stacey. Here's, like, I have zero desire to go to Europe at all. And as a matter of fact, I don't ever want to leave the 561. You know. Well, we've talked about that. I, I enjoy the climate. We all do. I don't want to leave. But she would like to go for a birthday uh, over there. Are we going to do that for World Juniors or what? I mean, I, I like let's, might as let's well. Plan, let's plan ahead here. Let's figure it out. We'll figure it out. Just not necessarily today. Probably so, not on the show. Yeah. Going to Finland eventually, not next month. Thank you, Stacy. Um, now, NHL wide with this question from Martin Latisur just very randomly said, "Can the New York Rangers win it all?" In some power rankings, as a matter of fact, the NHL overall standings this week, the New York Rangers are second place overall. And on Frozen Frenzy Tuesday, they pounded Montreal in Montreal 6-2. So I know you're a fan of the New York Rangers. I actually think it was 7-2. Was it 7-2? Yeah. This is what I will say, Marty and everybody listening, because I know Marty's a really good friend of mine. Last year, people were all up in my shit. I was on some Rangers podcasts. They were... Pretty rough in December. I think they won five out of 20 games or something. Heading into the new year, the Rangers started rolling. And they got cocky. And listen, they have a great hockey team. And even, you know, I was impressed with the way they were playing. However, when people were crawling up my ass about the Rangers, the first thing out of my mouth was they will never win because they have too many Americans. And that, my friends, is a fact. They have way too many Americans. It's the same as Minnesota has too many Swedes and Russians. 
You got to have a good mix of Canadian players on your team. Don't like what I just said? I don't care. But the fact of the matter is, kids in Canada grow up in a hockey environment. Kids in the U.S. do not. There's a reason that they win as teams. And the Rangers are just not going to win it. They probably have on paper one of the most talented teams there is. And again, you can disagree. I really don't care. But I've seen it. Year after year after year. Why do you think Vancouver never won with the Bobsy Twins? Too many Swedes on that team. They had a Swedish captain in Marcus Naslin. Never won anything. The last time the Rangers won, Mark Messier was their captain. There's a reason they won, and it's not going to happen this year. So there you go, Marty. Where do you know Marty from? Went to college together. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Thank you for the question. Um, now, they're of the breaking news since last week, just prior to Tuesday night's game, Minnesota Wild at the Florida Panthers. Paul Maurice, it was announced, signed a contract extension with the Panthers. Now, out of all of that, the Athletic, don't take my word for it, the Athletic website has reported he was in the last year, Paul Maurice, of a three-year contract that paid him just shy of $4 million a year. I think it's $3.9 million. Can you imagine? To live in Florida, coach the Panthers, life is great. I don't know what the extension would be for years or money. None of that's been reported, but um, it's just great news. But out of nowhere. I mean, yeah, I think a lot of it's because when teams re-sign their coaches or they sign their coach, they don't really talk about it that much. Yeah. Unless they're going to a new team. We never hear about this coach signed for this, this coach signed for this, because most of the time no one cares. But and I'm not saying that about Paul Maurice. I think a lot of people do care because he's that guy that was the longest coach winning us without a Stanley Cup. And so now it's this big deal. And now he's going to take him to the promised land for the next however many years. So I think there's a little bit more focus on that. But other than that, I don't think most people really care about all the head coaches in the NHL. Uh, well, I can tell you Paul Maurice cares. <laughs> and the funny thing was after the game, he said, uh, thankful that the ink is dry on that thing, especially after they had just lost 5-1. But my, my point on this is, I talked with Jeff Rimmer about this. You saw him and I had a long chat. While you were standing in the back, did you stand because you sat all day? Is that why you were standing in the back? I stood for a couple of reasons. It took us 90 minutes to get to the rink yesterday, and I was sitting in the back seat working. So driving Miss Daisy over here, I was crunched up in the back seat, Sitting there, I was over it. But yeah, I just felt like standing. I just didn't want to sit for the entire yeah. game. So Jeff Rimmer and I were dishing in the front row of the press box. And this Paul Maurice thing had just come down. He's a big fan of Paul Maurice. I'm a big fan of Paul Maurice. Who isn't? But we're kind of just sitting there going, why now? And even Jeff, we're not saying they're doing anything wrong. It's just this is usual summertime stuff. Even the Carter Verhage extension is usual off-season stuff. We're not saying there's anything wrong with it. It's all great news. I'm just wondering what the mindset is of the timing of it. That's all. You don't care. I, I don't really care that much to put that much brain power into yeah, it. Yeah, I do. But I just don't think Bill Zito really gives a shit what anybody thinks. <laughs> and if he's going to do what he's going to do, I, I don't think that this stuff should cloud the season. However, Paul Maurice isn't a player. He can separate things like you, that's why player contracts don't typically get negotiated during the year because it's too much for the players. But I, Paul Maurice, that's not a big deal for him. Uh, well, and again, it's good news, you know, but Verhage, you know, just a couple of weeks ago, they announced his extension just during warm up. You know, he said some of his teammates yeah. were tying their skates. Um, I don't know. This is the stuff that I care about and she doesn't. This is where we differ. And I think you're right about Bill Zito. I, I get the sense that Bill Zito, the general manager of the Panthers, runs every aspect of what goes on. And he should. He's the general manager. But this was not a PR ploy. You know what I'm no, saying? No, I don't think so at this all. This was on Zito, not the no, PR department. No, not at all. Yeah. I, don't think he did, I don't think he does anything for PR. Not at all. But, but most teams do. Some, so. I mean, Jerry Jones, maybe. Yeah, well, they do. They Well, <laughs> yeah. not every team. There's Everybody operates differently. But a lot of times, it's, let's announce it here. Let's announce it there. And But I don't think Zito cares. So, yeah, thank you for that. Now, as we move on, NHL-wide, we could talk about these Tampa Bay Lightning a little bit. Why not? We have Lightning fans that watch this show, they tell me. Up and down start to the season for them. And a little ragtag, too, right? They had the preseason game canceled because of Hurricane Milton. They went on the road early. But they started 3-0, and and then they went out on the road. They lost in Ottawa. I believe it was 5-4 on Saturday. Got shelled in Toronto 5-2 on Monday night. 
And I didn't think they were going to win in New Jersey Tuesday. Lo and behold, they put eight up, and they went 8-5 on Frozen Frenzy. So I think it's going to be up and down all year for Tampa. It's kind of almost what it was last year, even with Stamkos there. There were games where, it, it, including the first round of the playoffs, all of a sudden we see Florida roll them, and then one game they just flipped a switch. And I think Tampa, I was looking at some of their their highlights when they scored eight goals. And Hagel got three. He got a scored a natural hat trick in one period. And I just looked at all the other guys on the ice, and I kept thinking to myself, last year I was thinking, what's Tampa going to be like this year? Are they going to drop like a lot of teams do, like put themselves in the basement like Buffalo and try to rebuild? And I don't think they're going to. I think they're going to stay even. I don't see them being a terrible team. They've got enough core structure there. They have some decent speed still. Let's not forget, they still have Kucherov, who's arguably one of the best players in the NHL right now. Hagel's playing well. They've still got Hedman. They've got Vasilevsky and Nett. No teams are well-rounded anymore completely. It's not the way it works in the NHL these days. So when you have a solid core group of guys that are stable, you're not going to tank it into the ground. I'm slowly getting on board with the way the fans look at things versus, and the media versus the teams, i.e. the standings. I'll be honest with you, when I was working in hockey, we, I, I'll speak for myself only, didn't even look at the standings till the new year. But right now with the uh, Lightning, again, started 3-0, and 1-2 and since, so they're 4-2. and two. My math is bad, as you know, but... How long, when do you care about the standings? Uh, same time. New Year. They, they, at minimum. Yeah. They mean nothing. They mean nothing. Look at Calgary. I don't even think they've, they haven't even lost a game yet this year in regular season. Regular time. I, yeah. Yeah. Or sorry, regular time in 60 minutes. I don't, that, that is not indicative of what the Flames are going to do this year. Not for one second. Edmonton's terrible. The Panthers are not playing to their potential. It's it's not it doesn't matter. Well, I have written down as point six. What are your surprises so far? And she just mentioned one. The Flames are off to their best start in fifty-two years. I didn't know they've been around that long. <laughs> been around as long as me. <laughs> uh, just saying, they are the biggest. Well, that is a surprise because you know what? The Winnipeg Jets. I've point seven is not surprises. They're 6-0. and They're the only unbeaten team in the National Hockey League. That does not surprise me. So what we're doing here is jumping around the NHL. You viewers said you enjoy a Florida view of the NHL. So are you with me on that? The Flames are the biggest surprise. The Jets are the least surprising. I don't know if I would say the Jets are the least surprising. I am a little shocked that they're 6-0, and to be honest. I'm not shocked that they have a good record. But I, I don't know. Maybe I, I'm still a little shocked that at some point the train hasn't fallen off the tracks yet because it will. It's coming. Going to get hijacked quick. Yeah, well, it, it always does Correct. for them. But, you know, um, we were, you were talking about goalies earlier. At least you were, na- you were naming them like Andre Vasilevsky and so forth with Tampa. We should talk about Anthony Stolarz in Toronto, if you don't mind. They are going off the rails, as you say, or heaping praise on this backup from last year, the Panthers' Anthony Stolarz, thrust into a starting role with the Leafs because of an injury to their normal number one, Joseph Wall. Let's just say the Wall is not ready come playoff time because the Leafs think they're winning the Stanley Cup. You know that, right? They are, yeah. Because it's a year that ends in Y. They always do. Anthony Stolarz is going to be the guy to lead them to the Stanley Cup, do you think? I think that the conversation about whether or not a goaltender is strong enough to take a team to the Stanley Cup needs to die. It needs to die. We have seen year after year after year after year of goaltenders. Last year, let's be honest, Bobrovsky was the reason the Panthers, Bobrovsky and Barkov were the reason the Panthers won the Stanley Cup. No doubt. But before that, we had Stanley Cup winners in Aiden Hill in Vegas and Darcy Camper in Colorado. Correct. And realistically, Edmonton was one goal away from winning the Stanley Cup last year, and Stu- and Skinner would have been the guy to take him there. So everybody puts so much focus on goaltending. And I do agree, it is very important. But if a guy, if a goaltender's hot, he's hot. And I think that Stolarz is hot right now. Do I think he can sustain it for the whole year? No, because he hasn't played full time yet in his career. His 
backing up to Bark or to Bobrovsky does not indicate his talent level. He just was a any, anybody would be a backup to Sergei Bobrovsky the last couple of years. But the way he's playing now is great. Can you imagine going from the energy in Florida to the energy in Toronto? He's got the adrenaline going. The fans are just, you know, like it's a it's a different market. It's a hockey market. And everywhere he goes, it's hockey crazy there. So he's thriving off of it. But eventually it does come crashing down. I've seen some weaknesses. There were some holes when I watched the Leafs in Stolar's game. I'm not a goaltending pro. I'm not going to pretend I am. But there were just some things that I was like, eh. Plus, I'm just not sure he's... Toronto's not unfortunate in their talent this year, but I just don't think he's going to be able to carry it all the way through the season, regardless. Let of me the ask rest. you something. You mentioned the energy in Toronto. It is an actual thing. When I was flying home from Canada, I went through Toronto, which Johnny O thinks is my hometown. Still. Uh, yeah, and it's not. It's a long ways from my hometown and hers. But anyways, I'm in the airport in Toronto, and I could feel the energy. And Toronto was playing Tampa. That night, there was people getting off the plane. Some were Lightning fans coming from Western Canada to watch the Lightning. Doesn't matter. The Leafs were playing at home. You're walking through the airport. Tim Hortons. Tim Hortons. <laughs> put a mural of him on the wall in a Leafs uniform. He has played for the Leafs. Tim Horton. Um, you say the energy here. There isn't. I mean, there, there might be energy in the building from time to time. Tuesday night, you won't argue. There was no energy. You were there. When Minnesota was winning 5-1. Yeah, but, but even, I'm getting to a question. Okay. When you lived in Southern California for 10 years, was there any kind of energy for the Kings and Ducks? No, not in, I mean, it's the same as here, I guess. If you're a Kings or a Ducks fan or a Panthers fan or Lightning fan or whatever, you tend to like be a part of those groups, if you will, of people that like to go to the games and whatever. But I'm telling you guys, you get out of the, you get in the airport in Edmonton and the entire baggage carousel is wrapped in Oilers colors and Oilers and everything. It's just, a, if you've ever been in Montreal, you can feel the history of a hundred years of hockey pride there. It's just, it's so different. And, but again, with Stolars, it's like, I think he'll get a little bit wore out because he's Ugh. coming from an environment that is completely laid back. And there's nothing wrong with that. Why do you think people want to come play here? Because there's not the pressure from the media. There's not the pressure from the fans. We've talked on this show about why Paul Maurice is here. It's a no-brainer. Matthew Kachuk going from Calgary to here, completely night and day difference. Johnny Goudreau leaving Calgary and going to Columbus, same thing. You know, it's, it's just some guys cannot play in that environment. Some can that's why Connor McDavid and Wayne Gretzky were a special breed. It takes a special breed like that to play in a city like that. Can't even imagine. Um, <laughs> she, well, number one, Ryan Getzlaff is a friend of mine, former captain of the Ducks. He spent his whole career in Anaheim, I think 16 years. Does that sound right? Won a Stanley Cup there. And like I said, that. did you have any regrets? He goes, I would have liked to have played in a Canadian city. I'm like, oh, my God. And the guys up there complain they'd rather play where you are. Just be happy. Um, but... But I, get, but I get it. You know, Steve Stamkos went through the same thing. Thought about going back to Toronto. Can you blame him? I mean, these guys grew up watching these teams. They grew up in this environment, you know. Ryan Getzlaff grew up in an environment where there's an outdoor rink in the city. He's from the same city we're from. Outdoor rinks everywhere. You know, that's all you do all winter. I think at first it was nice for him to get away. And he started a family there, which is completely understandable. But... I think every player ultimately wants to play. Every Canadian player ultimately wants to play in a Canadian market for a reason. Yeah, probably. But what I like about this place, Southern South Florida, is that you can turn it off. You can't turn off Dolphins talk, really. You can't turn off college football. But with hockey, you can get away from it. Hockey, it, you can't yeah. even turn it on up in this no. bitch. You got to buy rabbit ears to get the Panthers games on your television. Are you kidding me? Right. So what I'm saying is I don't have a problem finding the games. Some people do. But I'm just saying I spent two summers in Calgary, one of which was the summer that Kachuk left, was traded. And uh, you could not get away from it. It drove me crazy. That's a Canadian city versus here. I like the ability to, to get away from it. Now, moving on. 
The Panthers will not be at home until November the 5th when they welcome Steven Stamkos and the Nashville Predators. It's a long well, time. That is a long it's time. It's a long time. Yeah, that's why I go to as many games at home as possible. And Thank you, Panthers, for allowing us to do that because I miss them when they're on the road. I really love going to the games live, and obviously you folks do too. That's why you're watching. But they're going to Finland. Just an update on Alexander Barkov. The last I'd heard... Paul Maurice was hoping to have him play in one of the New York games this week, Thursday or Saturday, Rangers or Islanders. Now, he wasn't on the ice Wednesday, so that might have been moved back a little bit. I'm not sure the latest, but he thinks that he'll have him in Finland. Wasn't it you that brought up to me? I said, can you imagine yeah. they go to Finland? The reason would probably mostly be Barkoff, and then he won't be able to play, which would be unfortunate. I'm sure they'll set it up, though, so that he can play. Set it up? What if he's not healthy? Well, they'll no, like they'll they're not gonna push him through a game now if they feel like uh. he can be ready for Finland. They're not gonna ride him on the Rangers or something. Barkov is too smart of a hockey player to put himself in a position where he's gonna risk furthering his injury. He's not that kind of a player. He's not a bang and crash guy. But they're not gonna put him in a position. I think he'll be, I think he'll play at least one of the games over there. It would really suck if he didn't, was what you brought up to yeah. me. You're like, wouldn't it yeah. suck if Barkov's not healthy to play in Finland because he's filled rinks last summer, or this summer when he brought the Stanley Cup back there. What do you think about the Global Series? Now, like, for instance, I am i don't really want to travel. We've established that. I like it here. People come here. Why would I want to leave? But I know not everybody's like that. Do you want me to really cut loose on this one? Like, do you... Do you if you I really don't know want if I want opinion, you to or not. Having these players travel to <laughs> another continent in the middle of the season is the biggest bunch of bullshit I've ever seen in my entire life. When they had that frozen bullshit where everybody played the same night, every game's going to start every 15 minutes. Guess why we had to sit in 90 minutes of traffic? Because the hockey game started at 6.30. In Philly, it was like 6 o'clock, 6.15, whatever the hell. All these games are starting 15 minutes. Everybody's stuck in traffic. Who does that benefit? Name one person that benefits. So you're going to make these players who live in one time zone fly to six time zones ahead, play a couple games of hockey, and then come back. When they were doing it before and they were doing it at the start of the season and they had the Flames and whoever else were playing in China, a why? Why? China's not going to become the hockey hotbed. Gary Bettman pushes, but I think he knew he was barking up the wrong tree on that one. They had him play at the start of the season, and when the Kings, the Kings one year, had to start their season in England, you guys. That is a completely, that's a 12-hour flight. Why would you do that? They, they started the season actually two weeks early, came back, got adjusted to the time zone, and then went. Well, so you're having them do it in the middle of the season? Why? Marketing. This is my point. It's the, the marketing in the NHL is dog shit. It's terrible. You're marketing to the wrong people. I've been saying that forever. You don't have to market in Canada. You don't have to really market in New York or Boston, whatever, right? But... They're trying to push, push, push hockey all over the place. Great, let's go to Finland and we'll make the Panthers go because Barkov plays. And then, boom, he's injured. And then all these poor fans over there, I'm glad they get to see hockey, but why are we doing this in the middle of the season? So we didn't plan that. I had it written down, though. Before I even asked you, you came out with it. So. I, will say, I will say this. Florida traveling to Edmonton last year is like the same almost <laughs> flight time to cross the friggin' pond from New York. But people got to understand this is eight, nine, 10 hours of travel in the air. Plus you're changing six, seven time zones. What's the point? Uh, so I had global series. Do you like it? I'll put you down for an X. Yeah, check it. N okay. No. <laughs> How about for depending on the time of year? Because listen, the Miami Heat are opening their season this year. And I know you're not a big NBA fan, but I went to a preseason game in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan in 1993 between Minnesota and Atlanta, and I loved it. And I'd never been to a live NBA game before, and I've been an NBA fan since. I don't drop a lot of dough on it, but you know yourself. I rode the bright line down to watch the Raptors here last year, two games. Um, so I went to that as a neutral site, and they had me as a fan really for life, not a season ticket holder or anything like that. So... I feel bad for the Panthers that they're going to Finland, but they just were in Quebec City on a for uh, preseason game. Like they're wearing these kids out. 
Oh, it's absolutely it's that too I much. don't like. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is there's other ways to do it? Why are you doing it in the middle of the season? Do yeah. it at the start. Give so preseason, you'd be okay with. It's not as bad because I saw our friend Corey, who now works for the Flames and worked for the Kings at the time. I saw what Corey went through. You got to be in London for like a week, whatever it is. You get all jacked up on your time zones. You're coming home. You're trying to work. You're trying to do all these things. And the players are trying to play on a different... T- it's just ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess uh, when the NHL comes off a $6.2 billion revenue year, the NFL, I'm sorry, I can't remember even what it was, $200 billion, I think. Something unreal. Actually, I think it was $13 billion is what they made, but still big. You're not telling... They're not going to accept that they're doing anything wrong. Which is super interesting because this is the way I look at it. The NFL doesn't market. Not really. They don't have to. Mm. They doubled the revenue of the National Hockey League, and the National Hockey League has more teams. So you tell me who's doing it right. They have the same amount of teams. But uh, when the NFL was playing in Brazil this year, I'll never forget Eagles and Packers. Just a couple weeks ago, I remember getting up in the morning, turning on the TV. Roger Goodell was on NBC, Good Morning America. Then he's on Sports Center. So I think they do market. I, I believe they, they do. I didn't see Bettman anywhere right, talking about anything. because he's an idiot and nobody wa- nobody has any respect for him. So he knows not to put his face out there. No, but really. I respect him. I like him. He's our neighbor in Boca. But he's not, he's not going out there because he knows. Roger Goodell, everyone knows he's the face of the NFL. And that guy's got some power. It's, it's just different. It's like I'm saying, you got way too many games in the NHL every year. The NFL plays for like four or five months max. Why are we just pounding? You're, we're trying to milk water from a stone here, and it's not working. Well, as I say, agree or disagree, the N- the NHL made $6.2 billion and they will not hear that they're not doing it right. That's all. Um, and I had my next point, and we're getting to the end of the program here, is Frozen Frenzy. Tuesday night, 16 games, 32 teams. I kind of guess I'll put you down for an X for that. Yeah. <laughs> Did you like it? Well, it's just, I mean, it's just another marketing gimmick that doesn't really make any sense. It doesn't benefit anybody. It's some random day in October where every team is playing. That means there was only one game on Monday night. Who the hell wants that? And one I game. Want, what, yeah. yeah, I want some more games. I don't want to watch just one game that starts at whatever time at night. More than anything, it's a novelty. I had, you know, I do a daytime talk show, Rod Peterson show, daily noon to two on Game Plus TV and WQEE radio. Rich Sutter was on. We agreed that it was nice for one night, but what he was complaining was, you understand, Canada, Sports Center's packed with highlights. He goes, All I got was 30 seconds of all these games. I know. Right? That's all they talk about on Sports Center up there. <laughs> it's, it's, they don't need the NHL network in Canada because that's what TSN's for. It is the NHL network yeah. in Canada, but it was too many games on one night, but for one night, it was kind of a novelty because when we got home from the Panthers game, I jumped on the couch and watched. ESPN 2's whip around coverage as they cover as they called it because I don't watch the NFL red zone but I guess this is what they do they just go from game to game to game and that was kind of fun and then they'd mix in the odd interview every night too much once a year we can live with it clearly they were going against the NBA because it was opening you want to talk about marketing to the wrong people that I don't understand they're different fans are they not different people for the most part, I think they are, yeah. Anywhere that I've lived that has NBA teams and NHL teams, it's two completely different people. Yeah, so why would you go after the NBA? I don't get it, but again, who am I? I'm just a simple mm-hmm. farm kid driving a U-Haul. No, go ahead. I'm done. I, other than Serena's points, Ben, anything you'd like to chime in? I don't know. Turn your mic on if you want. Camera yourself. Whatever. The floor is yours. Great show. Yeah, I love <laughs> great show. <laughs> I did. I did actually say when you asked, I did say that I wanted to talk actually talk about hockey this week. And I think <laughs> the, we did the teams, the games. I went to both oh. games. I went to the game. Canucks. No, Canucks were last week, to Thursday, whatever day that was. Vegas was here Saturday. Minnesota Tuesday. The Panthers were not good. They were not good. They have players that are capable of being good, but they were not good. You get the odd Verhage, Kachuk, Rush. Yeah, everybody gets excited. They score a goal, and then they carry on and don't do anything for three shifts. I literally felt like I was watching preseason. And Saturday was horrendous. But the Panthers did what the Panthers do. They play like dog shit for 50 minutes, and then they squeak out a win. 
And I will tell you right now, that does not mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. Don't come at me because the Oilers are even worse. And I fully admit that. I will call a spade a spade. Edmonton's been terrible. Florida has not been good. Oh, what they're missing their stars. Well, Kachuk played Tuesday night, and they were not good. They were terrible. Minnesota's not that great of a team that they should have manhandled them like that. They do have Kaprizov, who I think is one of the best players in the NHL and is underestimated, but it was not good. Should they be worried? No. But I'll tell you what. Vegas is tight. Vegas is mid-season form already, and the Panthers weren't. Vegas is pass, pass, crisp, crisp, crisp. Nothing was happening. The way the Panthers have been playing the last couple games is the way they played in the finals against when they were hurt and they were what whatever. It wasn't. It hasn't been good. And again, you don't need to worry. But watching Vegas, they are a classy organization, and they were tight that whole game. And I was blown away by them. They're a good hockey team. We have a new segment, The Last Word, with Serena Ooh, Taylor. I like that, actually. Brought to you by Sheehan's Rust Proofing. <laughs> Slapshot reference. I, I know. I don't know how many <laughs> would get that, but I'm just saying, with John Lynch, he, a broadcasting mentor of Serena in mind, he, he passed now. It used to be The Last Word with John. Now it's the last word. You didn't even know you were doing Lynch it. Lynch would be so proud to know that I was the one taking over the last word. Yeah, brought to you by Sheehan's Rust, Sheehan's Rust Proofing. <laughs> well, that was perfect. Uh, thank you, Ben. Great job. Thank you, everybody. Hope you enjoyed it as much as we did, and we'll see you uh, next week here on Cats and Bolts. <laughs>